In this part of the example, we're going to look at how to make graphs in SPSS. So I've already got my 2012 general social survey data in SPSS. And I'm, I'm going to make basically three graphs in this example. I'm going to make a pie chart for race, a bar graph for class, and a histogram, and then also a line graph for education. And so to make graphs, we basically just go to the graphs pull down menu. And we go to this legacy dialogues uh, pull down. And then if we wanted to make a pie chart, we would just select pie. And you can just keep the default summaries for groups of cases. You just click define. And now we basically have to define the slices of the pie. And so we're going to have to look here for our variable. Let's say we wanted to use race. We're going to highlight race and then use this arrow to put it over here where it says define slices by. And then we can either choose to use the, num the uh, frequency of cases or the percent. And if we click on titles, we can add additional information to our graph, such as a figure number. So we can call this figure one pie chart of race. And we can add more information in the footnotes, for example, like some source information, call this GSS 2012. And we have to put a total number of cases here. Now, uh, I know, because I've done this analysis already, that there are 1,974 cases uh, used in this analysis. If you're not sure what this number is, make a frequency distribution and look up the total number of valid cases. And so we'll click Continue. And then uh, down here, we're going to click OK. And SPSS will create our pie chart. Now, notice that you can actually edit this pie chart. So if you click somewhere within the pie chart, you'll be given some more options. And one of the options that you're given is uh, data label mode. And so if you click this on, you can actually click within the pie spaces, and it'll put either the percentage or the frequency, whichever you've selected, in each of the, the different slices. And so now our pie chart basically has frequencies for each one of them. And uh, we want to kind of get out of this data label mode if we wanted to put anything else into our pie chart. But we see that we have a pretty good looking pie chart right now. And so our pie chart has everything that's essential for uh, a graph element, a title, a source, total number of cases. Each of these things are labeled. Uh, let's take a look at the, the actual pattern here. So it looks like the, the vast majority of people in this, in this sample are white. So we have 1,477 whites, uh, 301 people who are black, and then 196 who are other. And of course, we could have done this for percentages. Uh, and we would have figured out, in a relative sense, how many more whites are there than, than, than blacks if we figured as, as kind of a, a percentage out of like, uh, as if it's 100 cases. And so that's the pie chart. Uh, let's take a look at some other graphs. Suppose we wanted to make a graph that, that uh, made a bar graph of class. And so again, we go to graphs, legacy dialogues, and then we would, we would choose the bar graph. And we'll just stick with the default. We'll stick with the simple bar graph and summaries for groups of cases. So just click Define. And then again, you can choose either number of cases or percent of cases. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. Uh, now we have to select our variable, class in this case. So we just click in here someplace. We type it in. Uh, it's highlighted. We just move it over here to where it says Category Axes. And then we can add some, some additional information to our chart. If we click Titles, we can call this figure two bar graph of class. Uh, we can put some additional information in the footnotes. So for example, we can, we can say that the source here is the GSS 2012. We can put a total number of cases. And I've, I've already done this analysis previously, so I know it's 1,957. But again, if you just run a frequency distribution, look at the valid percent, or the number of valid cases, that's the number that you would put here. So we can click Continue, and down below, we would just click OK. And notice that SPSS has created a, a bar graph of class. And so if we want to just kind of take a look at the pattern, we can. Um, and we can see very clearly here that, that uh, most people consider themselves to be either working class or middle class. And so it looks like about 45% of both are in these, these two uh, categories, maybe a little bit less. Uh, so the vast majority of people are in the middle of the distribution. About 10% are in the working class. And 
you know, maybe about 5% or less are in the, in the upper class. So a very small number of people in the tails. Most of the people are in the middle of the distribution. So finally, let's take a look at uh, how to create a histogram. And so if we go to graphs, di legacy dialogues, one of the, the options is histogram. And so let's make a histogram for education. So I'll find educ. I'll move that over to where it says variable. And again, I can add some titles. Um, I, I can say that this is figure three histogram of education. And I can put some source information, GSS 2012. And I know from previous analysis that this is 1,900 and 72 cases, but again, you could run a frequency distribution, look at the valid total for this. We'll click continue. Uh, we'll scroll down to the bottom here and click OK. And when we zoom out, notice that SPSS has created a histogram. Now, one question is, how does a histogram differ from a bar graph? And so notice that in the histogram, all the bars are contiguous, indicating that this, this variable is measured on a continuum. Whereas with the bar chart, uh, notice that the bars are not adjacent. They're discrete, indicating that these are not measured on a continuum. These are discrete units. And so there's a bit of a difference between the way we represent a histogram and the way that we represent a bar chart. And so what's the basic pattern here? Well, we can see that, that the majority of people look like they're sort of more educated. Uh, there's more people sort of in this half of the distribution and in this half of the distribution. Looks like we have some peaks. Looks like 12 years of education is one of the peaks. Uh, 14, 16, maybe 18, 20 years of education. These are probably terminal degrees. So uh, high school, presumably um, associate's degree, college degree, some people getting a master's degree or a PhD. And so we can see a lot of the, the peaks in the graph. We can see that ranges from about 20 years of education to, to zero years of education. Uh, and the middle is, is probably about here. OK, so uh, as a final graph, let's take a look at a line graph. Again, we can make the line graph for education. So we'll go to graphs, legacy dialogues, line. We'll make the simple line graph. Summaries for groups of cases, the default is fine. We can click define. And again, we can use the percent of cases or the number of cases. This is the frequency. This is the percent. Uh, let's choose our variable, educ. We scroll down a little bit. It's highlighted. We're just going to move it over where it says category axis. And we can click titles. And we can call this figure four line graph of education. And we can put in our source information here in the footnote. So this is source GSS 2012. And we can put in our total number of cases, n equals 1,972. I, I know this because I've looked at the frequency distribution. So I click Continue. And I scroll down to the bottom here and click, click on OK. And if we scroll down to the bottom, notice that we have a line graph of education. Now, the line graph doesn't actually show you anything different than what was shown in the histogram. Uh, basically, the information is the same. And so, again, we can kind of see that the range is from about zero years of education to 20. There's a peak at 12. There's another peak at 14, another peak at 16. The middle seems to be about 12. So either one of these two graphs is fine for education. And uh, the, basically, the way that SPSS makes these graphs is, is the same. Now, uh, I will say that, that graphing in uh, PSPP is a little bit more challenging. Uh, it has much more limited graphing capabilities. So I think you're really better off using SPSS than PSPP for graphing. Although there is a way to, to get PSPP to make some graphs. And so notice that like when I run these commands, uh, SPSS actually generated some syntax that it uses to, to uh, create these graphs. So you could do something like this in PSPP. So let me switch to PSPP for a second. On PSPP, you can actually enter syntax. So if you go to File, New, Syntax, uh, if you select that, it'll bring up a syntax window. And so in PSPP, here's what the syntax window is going to look like. Now, I've already entered some, some syntax that can create some graphs. 
So I, I could create a frequency distribution for race along with a pie chart, a frequency distribution for class along with a bar chart, and a frequency distribution for ed education along with a histogram. And so here's what the code actually looks like. Uh, unfortunately, bar graphs I don't think are implemented yet, at least not in the version of PSPP that I'm using, so this probably won't work. But I know that this one will work. And so if you, if you type the word frequencies, you, you tell it that the variable that you're using is race, and you use this slash pie chart. Uh, if you hit run selection, PSPP will actually create a bar graph. So it does have some limited graphing capability. It doesn't look quite as nice as the SPSS graph, but it nonetheless can do some graphing. Uh, we can go back to our syntax window. And I'm just going to zoom in here to show you the syntax for the histogram for education. Uh, so again, the, the frequencies is the command. The variable is going to be education or eduk in this case. And then we have a backslash histogram. And then if we select this, we go up here to run selection. If we go to our PSPP output window, uh, one of the things that, that PSPP will create is the histogram. And so notice that that's here. Again, it might not look exactly as nice as the SPSS graph, but it does nonetheless have some limited graphing capability. And so you can at least make a histogram and a pie chart in PSPP, which looks somewhat like the, the SPSS graph. So either one is, is kind of a good option, although I think SPSS has the much nicer and uh, far less limited graphing capability. So you probably want to use that to make graphs.